Okay, once again, you're back to Decision 2019, where we'll provide context and perspective on the most important issues around Nigeria's general elections. I am Christian Logodo. Thanks for staying with us. The election in Akwaibom State has come and gone, but it's been described by analysts as the most credible governorship election supervised by the former civil rights activist and lawyer, Mike Igini. The resident electoral commissioner in Akwaibom State has become a sort of a cult hero of democracy after reportedly standing in the way of attempts by some interest groups to compromise the recent election in the state. It was a two-horse race, no doubt, between the incumbent governor, Emmanuel Udom, and his closest rival, Obon Nsima Ekere. Udom polled 519,712 votes to defeat Nsima, who polled a total of 171,979 votes. Observers are indeed shocked that the ruling APC came off worse, despite its earlier reference to the use of federal might to house the PDP out of the state at all costs. Well, lots of accusations and counter-accusations by both parties in the state. First, let's speak to the party that won the election in the state to get a sense of how the elections played out in their favor. For more insight behind the headlines, I'm now being joined by Ini M. M. Mobong, who is the Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party in Akwaibom State. The youths are really taking over. <laughs> I think uh, we should be thanking Mr. President who has sent it to that uh, bill. I mean, such a gigantic position you are holding in Aquaibom <laughs> State, and uh, that state uh, came under some uh, ferociousness of, you know, political thuggery and brigandage. That was so. But the people resisted it. How? Well, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for having me. Second is that um, Aquaibom State um, from 1998 has always been um, pushing towards allowing young people to have a seat on the table. So it's a progression. It's even the speaker that we have. Now, what happened clearly was the fact that Governor Odom Emanuel, when he assumed office as governor, you know, he was secretary to government under Governor Kwabio. When he left to become governor of the state, decided to, he had a five-prong um, five, uh, plan, which included more than any other thing, political inclusion. So from day one, he made it abundantly clear that his government would be open to everyone as part of his five uh, plan agenda that is going to be open to everyone. Whether you had supported him in 2015, it didn't make sense. So you had from the beginning of his administration, even people who didn't support him. And you know, proximity creates value. If I sit on TV and see you every day, I, I, I'm not passionate, I don't know you, but when we begin to sit like this, when we begin, when I begin to see you off the camera, I begin to feel the humanity in you. So a lot of the people who opposed Governor Odom Emanuel then, who didn't know him, who now came to know him as governor. As governor, he would, um, he, 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 his simplicity was extraordinary. He would still sit around with his commissioners. He opened the government house to a lot of people who never, despite their capacity, that should have brought them to government house, people who never had any opportunity to get to government house. So those people began to say, wow, so this is this kind of guy. So the whole state, you know, was opened up in a way that we had higher levels of consultations. Traditional rulers had a buy-in. They could speak to a governor and say, listen, we, we, we think but, differently about But that about could be this. said of uh, uh, Senator uh, Goswil Akbabio, who ruled uh, the state for not just only eight years as governor. Mm. He was a commissioner at one time. And uh, it's something that is said to have institutionalized. No, I, I is it not the falling apart, you know, for no, him no, no. departing to the ruling uh, party at the national level that has caused the... Uh, you know, the, the bad blood? I, I served under Governor Gosula Pabio. First, let me, let, me, let me show you a paradigm. In a week, there were weeks, two weeks on end, you won't find the governor in Akwaibo. But Governor Odebi Manuel, for and, two and, weeks. The, and the developmental infrastructural projects were going on. Yeah, because, because, it, they, because it was a teamwork. You see, that's it. That's why when he defected, I said, nothing has happened to the team. The coach has just departed. You understand? And the no. coach can return. Well, if they could return. Well, the people of Akwaibom, you know, open their arms again to. Uh, the, 
despite what uh, some political uh, pundits are calling, you know, mm. uh, prodigality in this uh, mm. political po prodigality, mm. you know, politicians are known to go here and there and return to even uh, their roots. No, to, to return, I, I think that God wanted to teach my former boss a lesson. No one plays God, and Aquaibum people don't like Godfathers. In the entire politics of Aquaibum, they despise Godfatherism. In fact, the reason why Governor Dom Emmanuel had the, the opposition he had in 2015 was because some, they saw someone as his godfather. Immediately he took over government and he decided to have God the Father as his godfather. Aquaman people aligned with him. You do that election 600 times. With every time you have a better result for Governor Dom Emmanuel. So, but if Senator Kwabio realizes that, listen, I went against the wishes of my people. When I heard him say that he, he couldn't have lost elections, you see, when you lose, you want to console yourself, just like the person who, who, who fails the exams. You console so the himself. people of his own constituency, too, didn't, uh, Out they, of, they, they've, uh, you know, just forgotten all uh, he did for them? It's not about forgetting. You see, when you are not in tandem with the wishes of your people, the people also I thought you. I thought uh, sometimes in politics, or what we're seeing developing now is that uh, the, the electorate even vote for individuals and not party. No, incidentally, in Aquabum State... It's P party that you In, in Aquabum State, it's not just party. PDP is like a religion there. The, the old people do not understand what else you're telling them. <laughs> we have institutionalized it to a point that the old women, the young people, it's, uh, because that's the only party that has, that has structure up to the unit level. No other party does. So it will be difficult for you to plant a new party and take it to that level. Almost everything they are finding came through the platform of this party. Is it the, the highways you're going to find? Any, anything you're going to find, is you, you'd have the traces of PDP there. And therefore, so, and the umbrella means a lot to our people. So when they see that, and again, because the governor came and brought this government, that's why I said, when I told you about the former governor, Gosula Kwabi, two weeks, sometimes in a month, you stay in the state for only three days. So how would you make consultations within there? But the difference in Udom Emmanuel, in a month, even if he comes to Abuja for meetings, you see him back the next day. So in a week, you are sure that your governor, if he travels for any reason, has spent five days. It makes a whole lot of difference. People, the traditional rulers get to see him. The youth get to meet with him. So things receive treatment, first-hand treatment from him, not from a commissioner, not from a secretary to government. People want the governor. You see, that's how society, our kind of society is structured. And so he came, and Governor Dom Emmanuel came without heirs. You know, he's able to intermingle and, and interact with the people. And therefore, when the elections came and sites were to be chosen, the people decided, and remember, that in Aquaibom State, in the past four years, we have had peace like we've not had before, especially considering the recent past where we came from. Aquaibum people love peace a lot. Give an Aquaibum man money and give him peace. He will take peace before money. Okay. Um, well, the opposition, APC, um, is alleging that that res uh, result, you know, that's uh, returned uh, your uh, uh, principal, uh, Odom Emmanuel, uh, they are going to contest it because there were loads of irregularities, you know, that marred it, you know. It's contradicting, you know, uh, what, uh, how the electoral uh, umpire in the state there has been described as a sort of, you know, hero of democracy by, you know, conducting what observers, international and local, uh, saw as very credible. You understand? Yeah, I do. The APC have some uh, uh, points and reasons to go to tribunal, like they've said they are going to go to the mm. tribunal to challenge it. Well, you see, when people lose, it is commonplace that they, they should feel bad. It's global best practice. You feel bad. But when you feel bad uh, and you console yourself, there are, there are times you tell yourself a lie and uh, you just want to console yourself. But if it is monologue, it's understood. But immediately it becomes public discourse. It becomes self-deceit. Self-deceit is delusional. And delusional begins to call to attention the presence of mind of that person. Now, when you go, what, what, what challenge would you be challenging? Are you challenging the will of the people in a synodom where Senator Akbabio comes from, who, despite the intimidation he took to their place, still voted for Governor Odom Emanuel or voted for his opponent, Chris Ekwayam. Are you going to, in his senatorial district, there are 10 local government areas. Results in eight local governments, Chris Ekwayam came out of political retirement and beat him 
with a large margin. In one local government, he called the local government, he won, Senator Pavi won with a slim margin of 1,000 and won in his lo own local government with so much force. In winning his local government, he took so much force. He delayed coalition for three days. The man who wanted to give results in three hours ended up give another person. He said he promised the president in three hours he would deliver the president. He couldn't deliver himself in three days. He militarized the election. He brought in political thugs. He ended up beating up electoral officers. And these things have been documented. And the party is taking steps to ensure that he pays for it. So what will you be challenging? Now how is he going to pay for it? The, our laws are clear. If you laws commit, of the land. Yeah. If you commit electoral offenses, for example, you prevent the transmission of results, you attempt You've to You've made change, such presentation to the police. Those things have been, have been clearly documented. And we are going to seek the fiat. If the federal government refuses to try him, so this is a federal offense, we are going to seek the fiat of the relevant authority and prosecute him. No one is above the law. No one. Senator Piper was not a foundation member of the PDP. He wasn't, even, he, he, he wasn't even part of those who struggled for the creation of the state. Therefore, he cannot claim monopoly of political capacity in the he state. He must have been a young man then uh, during the but struggle for the creation of the state. Incidentally, my father, in, uh, I, come from, I come from a home where my father was part of it. So I know those. I know the faces of those who struggled. I know the faces of those who can claim some sense of entitlement, like oh, architect Obong Victor Atta. So when you are a beneficiary of the struggle of sweat and blood, you don't claim political monopoly of such to the point where you deride the people who haven't freely elected who they want to elect. You are not telling them that uh, you cannot fail election. People, you have failed. So self-deceit is delusional. And after a while, if he continues to say that, we'll simply call for the mental examination. Let me quickly uh, take away the um, Ibom airline which uh, the state government has gone into. Mm. Uh, infrastructurally, uh, Akwaibon, particularly Uyo, is being compared to Abuja when you talk of uh, the roads networks and well-paved roads and the rest and bridges and what have you. What, in this second term of uh, Udom, what should the Akwaibon might really be expecting? What kind of consolidation are they expecting? Because Unemployment rate is still very high in Akwaibom State. When you look at the humongous uh, revenue uh, that you get from uh, the federal allocation, the 13% oil derivation and the rest. Okay, there, there's a plan that the, His Excellency the Governor calls the completion agenda. That completion agenda is both. I was listening to your interview with um, the Honorable Member who just left, who showed the, the nature that budget should interloop. So the completion agenda is um, interlopes from the five-point agenda that His Excellency had before. So we are looking at completing the infrastructure expansion and consolidation. We are talking about roads. We are having super highways that will lead to the Ibom Deep Sea port. And of course, you know, it, and he's concentrating on three transport gateways, the air, the land, and the, and, and the sea. Now, the gateway, the super highway that we are handling in Ibom Deep Sea port opens up to the deepest, the, 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 the waterway with the deepest natural drought. And therefore, you discover that when that becomes operational, and what has he done to it? This is the farthest that project has gone. We've gone to the point where we've pre-qualified the contractors, and very soon fiscal work is going to start there. So when you look at that, when you look at that, we've started Ibom Air, which would soon be, become commercial. When you look at that fact, and you see that even on road transport... Well, the whether, government hands off Ibom Air, because it's been known that uh, government... It's not government's business to drive a uh, business, Governor but rather to set up or uh, roll out, mm. you know, policies that will uh, Rest help. Rest assured, uh, it will be run in a private sector-driven approach. The governor said, uh, you know, priority is going to be for only uh, acquired mines. No, he didn't say priority in terms of buying tickets. You can't stop anyone from buying tickets. He said that the state is making an investment, and where, for example, we need to carry five pilots and. We have Akwaibom people who are qualified, ably qualified like the rest. Uh, the, the, their indigenship should become a clear advantage. I'm, I'm sure there's nothing wrong about, about that. The first, the first is qualification. He cannot mortgage qualification. He cannot mortgage professionalism. But you know, there are, there are times when people go two to two, head to head. It's, there must be a point of advantage. It's, uh, it's global best practice. So Aquibum people, because it's an Aquibum investment for the world, we're trying to create a California situation in Aquibum, where California 
as a state is the sixth largest economy in the world. But when talked into... What products are you going to use to create that? Because we know the uh, Silicon Valley and the mm. rest, you know, of uh, California that you're talking. So what single product are you going to use? Is it just infrastructural development? Not just infrastructure. What are the attractions there? Ibon Power Station isn't, uh, you know, the government... Uh, had been on it mm. since 1999, if I can recall, or mm. even before then, and the rest. And it's still not... Uh, no, you, you may not be currently aware. Mm, Ibon, Power, Ibon Power has mm. even been given an additional certificate to generate more power. We are generating more than even the federal government can take over. Mm. Ibon Power currently is being owed by the federal government because, you know, in off-taking, the federal government and other companies... Are I quite off understand that, so yes. We are, Ibon Power is running in full blast mm. and going for expansion. Mm. When you live there, in terms of food sufficiency, today, tomatoes, we didn't know that we could plant tomatoes. But today, the import of tomatoes into a book, I never knew. You know, as men, we just sit down and eat food. You don't know what women go through to get the food available. There's a particular time of the year that back then in Aquabum, tomatoes would be extremely costly. I never knew until we started growing tomatoes there. Now, in terms of local food production, we are going into food security and sufficiency in Aquaibum State. And when that happens, we're also exporting same out. Remember that the Malaysians came to us for palm oil. Today we are behind. What is the governor doing about it? We are going back to those things. So we are selling an Aquaibum where, number one, there is peace. And a lot of people, we have Turkish investments now in Aquaibum. I'm not sure you have those Turkish investments in Abuja, but we have them in Aquaibum. You know why? Because there is peace there. And there is a coordinated attempt to market the states. And therefore, the syringe factory that we have there is producing syringes that you find everywhere in, 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 in Nigeria. And therefore, we are sending to Nigeria syringes from Aquaibum. The metering factory that we have there will continue to pa top power generation and distribution in Nigeria at least for the next 50 years. There's nothing that will stop it. Now, so we are producing meters in Aquaibum state, and we are sending to the to, to Nigeria. And recall, even the Minister of Power said that we are yet to reach the consumption capacity of meters. Th these are government-driven uh, projects yes, or privately these driven? these are government-enabled projects. Okay. And now what happens when you come, government provides land, depending on the template you're bringing, they provide land, they convert it to equity. And Aquabon people are working there. There's ch exchange of technology. Majority of the people working in the syringe factory are from Aquabon State. Majority of the people working in the metering factory, they have to send them abroad, they come back, they are from Aquabon State. We're doing a, 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 a flour meal there. We're also having a jetty. We're preparing a jetty there. So this is their emerging Aquabon that must be industrialized. Because until you get to that point, the civil service cannot be expanded to accommodate the teeming number of young people who come out from school every day. And we don't even see the civil service of any country must not be, must never be the point, the, the dropping point for everybody. Civil servants must not be capitalist oriented. They must be people who see the protection of the nation first before their individual interest. But when there are no jobs, everyone, including the core capitalist, looks at business, looks at the uh, civil service. And to further drive that, because when people talk about the security, it didn't just happen overnight. People have been given jobs to do. Now, what the NBAs may not have been able to capture in their statistics is the fact that so much informal jobs have been created in the informal sector. I share some things with you, 2.5 billion given to traders, directly given to traders, you know, as so, so Aquaibum too had the uh, trader money. No, trader money before the election. Trader money is derogatory from the first month in government. It's the, the same list. thing. The, no. the same purpose is to you know show up. I mean, uh, reduce the poverty level, show up employment, and the entrepreneurship can amongst you, the poorest. Can of you the poor. convert ten thousand naira to dollars? And what can ten thousand naira do? We are talking about We're the talking least of person. the Nigerian environment. We are yeah. talk yes, the Nigerian environment is dollarized because most of the things you're expecting them to buy are imported. That is for you, the elites. No, Granot no, 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 is not no, imported. Bananas oh, are not imported. No, but uh, the, even the palm uh, uh, products you're talking are not imported. But when, when, when you need to transport them, there is a dollar component in the fuel that will be transferred to them, sir. Trans you, you need to export into abroad. No, transport them from, from the north to Aquabon. There is a dollar component there. In Aquabon, what we are doing, the least person gets 200,000. That pushes people out of poverty. That pushes the market women from people who were... But that only started just a few weeks before the election. No, it wasn't it, a policy that started from, you know, the first uh, day in office of no, uh, Emmanuel Udom. Take it from me. I, mm. I, I, I'm a lawyer and I speak on authority, sir. You speak the truth as a lawyer? I speak the truth at all times. Okay, now, le okay let's not uh, now, bring uh, the biblical now, idea about lawyers let me, in now. Let me tell you. 
from the one he created an office of a special assistant on traders matters and that office in conjunction with the ministry of finance had been running this we launched in 2017 we celebrated the third year of that 2.5 billion interest free the people are there. In fact, they have recycled it to a point that now they are taking stock of those who have collected so that they can conclude with those who are yet to collect. That is what's happening in Aquabo. So, so it's really not gone around very well then? No, you know, it's um, the amount of people who haven't seen the benefits of entrepreneurship have come in. So you, you also need to process them because these things are loans, they are not grants. What the governor is doing is paying the interest on it so that you can be free to run with the principle. So that has been a conscious strategic attempt to show up, show up the market base and the entrepreneurship capacity of Aquaibon people. And you don't need to be a card kind member of PDP to benefit from it. In fact, the PRO of uh, APC in a local government has benefited from it because Governor Bill <laughs> Emanuel does not believe in partisan politicking. He believes that the political party is a vehicle. When you arrive government house, government house does not have the call of a political party. It's it has the state the as a constituency. Right. But when you need to take a trip back home and back to the office, you need that vehicle again. That is why the vehicle of the party is permanently packed there, sir. Okay. Um, in in, well, no no wonder you are the publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party in Aquaibom State. Uh, that's like a second home to me, anyway. Wow. But um, let's look at the role INEC and its officials played, you know, in, in the elections. We're, we're about rounding up, and I just said that I should bring that in. Um, for the state uh, elections, they were superb. Mm. The presidential elections, how would you say? Well, INEC, you know, there are multi-sectoral participatory state agencies involved in elections. But INEC is supposed to play the supervisory role to all of them, just like you're seated here. The guy in the transmitter, the guy in the camera, and all of that. But now, so INEC as an institution, in preparing for this election, we commend them. In Aquaibom State, they did extremely well. I share with you. Is they it not because you've won? No, no, it's not that. We had said that from the beginning, sir. We had kept, a guinea kept his cards open. He said, when it has to do with recruitment of staff, Abuja sent list. Senator Tainan sat on national TV and agreed that Abuja sent the list of the coalition and returning officers. So how do you now blame Igini for announcing a list that was sent? Now, and Tainan said that he had confidence because the people being sent were federal government workers, meaning that he, so he, as a state government, we didn't have workers who were there, so we, we didn't shout. But however, when the, when the people do their duties well, the duty of the returning officer is to announce results. duty of coalition officer is to collate, not to vote. Therefore, the selection of returning officers, selection of the process, and in inspecting materials, the things were open. Our party agents kept giving us satisfactory responses. Every question asked. There were times when some ballot papers were not enough. Iginu would explain to the best of his ability. And they sat together and shared. APC was there, PDP was there, other political parties were there. Therefore, giving Iginu a bad name to him. But this same Iginu conducted elections in Edo State, PDP lost. Conducted in Imo, PDP lost. In Cross River State, he wrote a petition as I a resident electoral commission against the PDP. So what are we talking about? So if you have wanted Igini to play ball, Igini was not posted there for elections. Igini has been in Aquaman for over a year. Just like other people were posted around. So the simple thing is, Igini was not for us. Igini was not against us, which is what an umpire should be. You should play by the rules. Now, the problem Igini had was a simple sticking to the rules. Because the, sen the, sen the senator, my former boss, said he promised the president to return the president in three hours. My brother, no election. The election regulation says until it is 2 p.m., you cannot stop voting. And after voting, you start sorting. After sorting, you count. After counting, you record. After recording, you paste. After pasting, you transmit from the unit to the what? ward. From the ward to the local government. From the local government to... How did he want to do all of that in three hours? Because he said, I'll give you Aquaibon's results in three hours. So Igini simply said, my job is to make sure that voting stops at 2 p.m. That was way beyond three hours. That is Igini's fault. So if you know Igini, tell him next time, please, when people say three hours, either you resign so that they can have their three hours or you find a way. They should have changed the law. The senator was a senator of the Federal Republic. He should have changed the law to make sure that voting starts at 8, ends at 10. Then he'll use one hour to call and send results to the president. Igini has 
not compromise himself. I, I sat with SMA Yibo on TV, and he said, I said, bring proof, bring evidence. You said he, met, he, he had a meeting with civil society organizations and said, we say, bring one person, one person to state that. Nobody has come out till today. But the simple thing is, if people uh, want to court you, and you know, if you ask again, you want to see him. Because I, I saw the state chairman of APC writing, he, he wrote a press statement and said he called the Guinea, that the Guinea's response was not favorable. I said, what were you calling him for? Tell us the contents of the discussion. Because the Guinea, like a judge in a court, if you need to speak to a counsel on a matter, the other counsel should be there to be sure. So why, when you called the Guinea, did you tell the state chairman of PDP that uh, I was about to call the Guinea? If you need to see Guinea, he brings you to his office and calls his directors. And you say, excuse me. He says, no, it's INEC matter. Let's discuss. That's where people are angry. People should, rather than vilify Guinea, should glorify him. In fact, we are looking forward to a day when a man of the quality and character of Guinea will be the national chairman of INEC. On that day, democracy will have a face. Democracy, the hope for a thriving democracy will be there. See. In a quiet boom state, I'm not afraid to tell you, before becoming public secretary, I actually served under the former administration. I was SA political under Governor Odom Emanuel. I was SA student affairs. Some people have not done elections before, but results will be announced. It is the first time some people in some places are seeing ballot paper. You need to see how people were happy holding, people were, people were snapping, were hugging ballot papers. And after the results, you know what? There is massive jubilation All in right. Akwaibom State. All right. Uh, thank you very, very much for thank coming much. to our program. That's the PDP Publicity Secretary in Akwaibom State, in the M.M. Obong. Thank Thanks you. very much indeed. Pleasure is mine. Cheers. I, I welcome you back home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That will be a special invitation. <laughs> well, that's it for this edition of Decision 2019. Remember to join us again a fresh edition tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thanks for watching.